MJ, blessings. Nice to see you. Welcome. Adiola Disu, welcome. Nice to have you. Shigo, welcome. Nice to see you back. Monica, welcome. TY, nice to see you back. Nkiru, welcome. Welcome, welcome. G. D. Craig, welcome. Angela Carrea, welcome. Bosse Fanyajola, wow, it's been a long time. Welcome back, my sister. Lola Shoronke, T.Y. Mo, Nkeshi Amadi, Titus Olorun. Allah on Nishola. Welcome. Mbabazi Bizi. Welcome. Michael Afolabi. Shigo again. Uh, Glory Duru. Bidemi Alabi Ogumbi. Peace. Bien. Hello, Sister Peace. You are able to join us today. Welcome. Uh, Anota Jinad. Oh, Bishop. That's Bishop Richard the Berry guy is here. I'm sure you are still traveling. <laughs> thank you for coming on. And thank you for being such a huge, huge blessing to us here in Kiev, Ukraine. You know, everybody is still sharing your video. <laughs> they are still sharing your story. In fact, I still spoke to somebody yesterday that was telling me how they were blessed by your message. So thank you so much for coming to be a blessing to us here. And then, uh, hey, friend Soto, Olukayo De, Daniel Asenga, Gwingalawal, Nkiro Jimadu, Laura Ikeobi, Sandra Idunwoyi, Doris Ngere, Eric Osadolo, uh, Kunle Ade Nikpakun, Elizabeth Ali, Mufelola, Pastor Chris, Obi, Ojimadu, Galina Kirishenka, Afumi Jaboda, uh, Ola Inkasheu, She Sandra. Okay, now let's, let's all begin to go and uh, and copy let's go and what you could call let's go share the the message please if you don't mind let's go share the message it will really be a great benefit to people and to you too if you could go and <laughs> if you could go and share the message so let's go and share this message right now if you don't mind <laughs> so go and press the share button. Let's go and press the share button and get the thing going. You know, we have a very, very serious topic to deal with today. So, to be able to finish it, we need to start on time. So let's quickly go and share the link. Of course, we are still talking about analytical thinking, but the topic today is going to be on purpose. You know, I gave you two uh, eight, eight principles of analytical thinking. Now is it is the time to break them down? 
and to make sure that you get the whole picture. So eight principles of analytical thinking and uh, what are they? Do we need to repeat them or I can just start uh, uh, with, you know, with each one? Okay, let me quickly go through them again, repeat them for you and then after that you could, we will start with the first one. The first principle of analytical thinking is purpose. Every thinking must have a must have a purpose. Every thinking must have a purpose. The second principle of analytical thinking is questions. If you want to think analytically, you have to be able to ask questions. So questions, you have to be able to ask questions. So questioning, the ability to question yourself, question others, question everything, is one of the features or principles of analytical thinking, of a thinking person. So thinking, every, every thinking <clears throat> must answer a question. Every talk, everything must be an answer to a question. You must be answering a question one way or the other by whatever you do. Next one. The next principle of analytical thinking is assumptions. Every thinking, every thought, everything you do is actually dictated by an assumption. You are coming from a place of assumption. You are assuming something. There is an assumption that is behind whatever you do. Next after that is point of view. Anybody that does anything is being guarded by a certain point of view or a certain viewpoint or worldview or paradigm. There is a worldview or paradigm behind everything you do. So you don't just, you know, come out of your mother's womb thinking the way you are thinking. It's been influenced by a school of thought. So there is a school of thought behind whatever you're doing. Next point is research, statistics, evidence. Every thinking to be out for every thinking or everything you do to be authentic and to be genuine and to be believable, to be credible, for anything you do to be credible, you must make sure that they are well researched, they have data, they have information, they have evidence. They are well researched. The next one after that is if you really want to think, you must learn to turn your feelings, your words, your thoughts, you must learn to turn them into ideas, ideas and concepts. You must reason in concepts and ideas. You must learn to reason with certain concepts and ideas. You're not just a bunch of words and a bunch of emotions, <laughs> but ideas, ideas and concepts. Next one, if you want to reason and to think well, you must also realize that all thinking, all reasoning and everything you do must have a reference or inference. Where you, where you, what are the things that are connected to what you are doing? What are the things that helps to understand whatever you are saying? Interpretation. The reference or inference that will give interpretation to whatever you are talking about. Or further studies. And finally, all reasoning must have implications and consequences they must result in something. They must have results, application. Implication and consequence, implications and consequences. You people are learning so fast because, you know, one time I, I told you people not to be greeting each other and talking to each other on the platform that if you come here, you come here to learn and don't 
be writing each other, be focused on what you're here for. And uh, be serious and be focused. Don't be distracted by writing to greet that person and to greet that person and to do the other. You know, you could do that on the other platforms that we have. And uh, I'm, imp I'm impressed by you all. I'm impressed that uh, you've, you've really, you are really holding yourselves together. You are really, you know, controlling yourselves. And uh, that is uh, very encouraging that you are indeed learning. Um, we have many other uh, platforms that we that we use uh, where we could do that. So if you are not part of a messenger, uh, the messenger communication that we have, you might want to, you know, join as somebody that is on the platform to invite you to the messenger platform where we where we all communicate and fellowship with each other. And uh, we have other platforms, uh, groups like History Makers, Sunday, Dr. Sunday Adelaide Life, uh, Sunday Adelaide, continue, Dr. Sunday Adelaide, DSA Continues, and things like that. So you could join all that, and uh, that will make things uh, much more uh, easier. But here, when you come here, let's just face business. Let's just face business. Okay. Now that we have run through of the uh, eight principles of analytical thinking or of the art of thinking, uh, we are going to take them one by one now. We're going to take them one by one. And um, I will probably start by telling you many instances from the Bible. You remember in Luke chapter 2, when Jesus went with his parents to, the, to Shiloh, or to Shiloh, uh, for the yearly celebration, he was 12 years old, and something happened. We all know what happened. He got lost, and his uh, parents were very particular about that, and they were concerned, and then... You know, when they found him, he kind of like, if to think about it in our modern day thinking, we will say he was nonchalant about it. It was like, he was not taking it serious. We'll say, don't you know I must be about my father's business? Now, that instance, that incident that happened with Jesus, you know, it's not just an incident. It was with a purpose. So for, you, for a thinking person, everything is for a purpose. Everything is done with an intention in her. So God arranged that, that Jesus will be lost, that that incident will happen so that there will be an opportunity for him to reveal his own identity to his parents and for him to be able to affirm to them what they had known before he was born, that he is aware that he is here for the father's business. Now, let's look at another instance. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist was baptizing people at the Jordan. And in the process of his baptism, Jesus walked up to him to be baptized. And this looked like an anormal, anormality to John the Baptist. How could you be coming to me to be baptized when I am the one that's supposed to be asking you to baptize me? Why did that happen? It's because of this principle we are talking about today. And the principle is that God is a God of purpose. God is a God of purpose. Jesus is a God of purpose. Everything you see in the Bible, when, after I finish this particular uh, teaching with you today, you will begin to read your Bible differently. The Bible is going to be different to you. Uh, you are going to be seeing things that you had never seen in the Bible before. You will discover that, you, for example, when you just know this one principle, that God is an intentional God, that God is very purposeful, God is very intentional, and everything you see in the Bible, there is nothing there that is happening by accident. So even if that situation when Jesus needed to go for baptism, we could see the purposefulness of God when 
uh, Jesus was challenged, his answer showed us the purposefulness of God. And how does that, how do we see that? Because he said, you know, let's follow all righteousness. We must observe all righteousness. That it is, it must be so that you, you will baptize me today just to observe all righteousness. Which means it was intended, that was the original intention in the heart of God. It means that that is the purpose of the Father. It, it means that is a righteousness, the, it is the right order. It is an order that must be observed. It is an order that must be observed. So he said, you know, uh, don't worry about your culture or your traditions or your previous understanding, thinking that, you know, you are the greatest. I mean, how could I be the one to baptize you? So if you look at that story, you will see that there was an intention there. So what does that tell you about God? It tells you that God has planned everything. God doesn't allow just anything to happen without an intention, without an intent, without a purpose, without a premeditated goal, reason, aim, you know, mission. Let's look at another story in the Bible. Do you remember the incidents when Jesus went with his mother to the wedding, to the wedding ceremony? At Cana, Cana, Cana of Galilee. You know what happened there? Oh yeah, we, you know, when they didn't have enough wine. You think that was just an, for us who are used to counting everything as spiritual. For us who see superstition in everything, we could look at that story and think, it just so happened. But not with God. So by the time you begin to understand God, that God is always intentional and God does not do anything without a purpose, you begin to realize that God knew that that situation was going to come up. And God knew that Jesus was going to be there. God made Jesus to appear there. God made that situation of lack to occur. So that the, the original purpose that God had in mind will be carried out and so that there will be a revelation and a manifestation of the son of man in that particular instance in that particular situation so nothing happens by accident in god's mind and in 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 the in in, in with god god is a god of purpose in all things and so you must know that in is dealing with you as well he knows exactly what is happening to you and what is happening with you. He's not taken by, what do you call it? He's not taken by, uh, by surprise, by anything, with anything happening to you. He is a God of intention. He is not surprised. He maybe had set all those things up for them to happen to you or to happen with you. He's a God of pre-planned, pre planned pre uh, meditated purposes, premeditated actions. God always premeditates upon his actions. And the point we are talking about is that for a thinking person, for an analytical person, everything is done with a purpose. So every thinking must have a purpose. Every thinking must have an intention beneath it. So what I'm saying is I'm t telling you different stories. Like, for example, when Jesus was going to Jerusalem, you probably remember this story as well. Then the villagers stopped him and, you know, told him that he would not be able to pass. And then some of his disciples came up and, you know, somebody said, let's kill them. Somebody said, let's bring fire uh, to consume all of them. All kind of reaction. God knew what was going to happen. And God allowed that to happen so that the people will see the heart of the Father. 
so that they will see Jesus will be able to reveal to them the attitude of God that when same things like this happen and people come against us that the response of God is not to destroy when there is when when things even come to this stop his will or his wishes or his purpose or to disrupt his agenda and to disrupt his plans his immediate response is not to kill people. He has not come to destroy. He has not come to kill. He has not come to, you know, to destroy people. So he's, he's telling us, he's showing us that through that incidence, what kind of reaction should our reaction be when people come against us, when people stand on our way, when people disrupt our plans, when people do evil against us. That our response is not to call down fire upon them or to call down death upon them or to try to destroy them and do to them what they have done to us. That is a far cry from what I see all the time on the Facebook. I see some men of God all the time, our fathers, the so-called fathers in Nigeria, that people put out their quotations, almost especially in the beginning of the months. That's why I'm not big on the beginning of the month. People are saying, oh, happy new month, happy new month. What, then you have to be saying happy new day then. You know, in, with God, there's no new day, no no month, no. Everything is, every day is a new, you know, it's the same. So anyway, but when it's the beginning of the month, all these men of God will say, anybody who tells you that you will not see the end of this month, something should happen to them. Anybody who tells you you will not see the end of this year, the person sh this sh and that should happen to them. This is what the so-called big men of God are. You know, at least that's what people are saying. They are writing for them on their Facebooks, and that is totally the opposite of what. So, if you begin to read the Bible, knowing that what and asking yourself, what is the purpose? Why God allowed this particular instance, this scripture, to come? To be written there. What is God trying to tell us? What is the intention that Father is 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 trying to communicate to us? What is the what is the uh, what is the lesson? What is the purpose? There is always a purpose for any instance you see in the Bible. For any story, there is a reason for everything. There is always a purpose why God allowed those things to happen. So in the in that case, when God Jesus would not allow the disciples to call down fire, uh, you remember the two brothers, right? John and James. They wanted to call the fire. The son, that's why they were called the sons of thunder. They wanted to call the fire and wanted to let Jesus use his authority. Yes, Jesus had the authority. Jesus had the power. He had the authority to be able to destroy that whole village. But he would not do that because then he would be giving us the wrong message you would be leaving us with the wrong example and but he therefore gave us the right attitude that we must have when people come against us we don't come against them in the flesh we don't react in the flesh we don't do evil to people because they do evil to us we reward them with good we overcome evil with good we overcome evil with kindness and that's what jesus did so jesus just said okay if they will not allow me to go through to Jerusalem through this way, let's go. Let's go and take another way. Let's go and take another path, and that's what he did. You said you also remember the instance with uh, with the woman that was caught in adultery. Do you think that was also by accident? That was an accident? No, it wasn't. God knew that situation was going to come up. And God also allowed that situation, that response of Jesus to be displayed through that kind of situation. So that when we see people who falter, when we see people who fail, when we see people who go, who go, uh, or who do something beyond or, be, you know, beneath our expectation uh, uh, and they fail or they fall or they sin, that we shouldn't point fingers at them and we shouldn't throw stones at them and we shouldn't hate people and we should not kill people. That we should be coverers of brothers. We should be people who cover for people. We, could, we are not denying the wrong they did. We are not covering the wrong they did. Jesus was not covering the sin of this lady. He was not saying it doesn't matter, but he was covering for the person. So we see that everything that you read about in the Bible has a purpose behind it. 
Everything that you read in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, there is a purpose behind everything. You remember we are think, talking about analytical thinking? Now, let's go, I'm going to now, I've, I've given you, this is just introduction, I've just given you uh, the general picture that God is a God of purpose. Everything he does, he does it with a purpose. And what is that telling us? Uh, that is telling us that we too must be people of purpose. That is telling us that we too must not be erratic people. We must not be just emotional people. We must not be people who just act out by stimulus or who just act out by emotions, by instincts or by reflexes. That, you know, we must not be people who just do things, you know, chaotically, irrationally, erratically. That we must be people who are we will think through things before we act them out. We must not depend on sentiments. We must not just be emotionally, emotionally driven. We must think things through. And we must look for purpose in everything we do. And that purpose must reflect God's mindset. Our, that intention must reflect God's views, God's values, God's heart, the kingdom's heart. So that's what God wants us to be, to be people who do things intentionally. In doing things intentionally means to think things through. That we are people who weigh the things, our reactions, our attitudes, our decisions before we come to any conclusion. That we say things after thinking them through. God is like that. God is a God of purpose. And that's the more reason why he wants us to be like that. After Jesus spoke to the disciples and told them about the parable of the sower, he later on came to them, do you understand this parable? God is interested in understanding. God wanted them, Jesus wanted his disciples to think. Even though he had told them the parable, but he was concerned about the understanding. God is concerned about your thinking pattern, even today. God is concerned about your mind. God is concerned about your reasoning. He says some Christians and some religious people think that God is just spontaneous and erratic, erratic, and that God is just spiritual, that it just moves wherever the spirit moves, that God is just, he's just, he's just moved up and down by, it's not guided by any principle or by any order. No. But God tells us that God is a God of order. God is a God of order. He's not just moved anyhow without any principle behind it. His actions. The very first principle behind the action of God is purpose. Everything God does, it does with a purpose. You must remember that. So, God does everything with intentions, with principle. He does everything with intention and principles. We must be like him. There is nothing that you should do that should just be chaotic, erratic, and just anyhow. Everything you do must have well thought out plans, intentions, purpose, aims, and goals. Now, how do you do that? Let me now give you the methods or the technology or the know-how of thinking purposefully. So I want to share with you today the 
formula, the algorithm of thinking purposefully. And not just thinking, but and acting purposefully. The algorithm of behaving and acting with purpose. What are the principles? What are the laws? What are the uh, what are the methods? What are they? Yeah, what are the methods that you could apply that will help you? What are the formulas that you could apply <clears throat> that will help you to be a thinking person? Number one. So what I'm talking, what I'm going to give you now, are the methods of thinking or helps that hints that will help you to think purposefully and act purposefully. Number one law, I mean, number one point in purposeful thinking. For you to be able to think purposefully, and act intentionally, you must always, first of all, the first thing you must do is take your time to determine what you want. Always stop, take a minute, take a time out, pause to determine what do you really want? Why am I doing what I want to do now? Methods of purposeful thinking. Methods, the first method is you must find out the reason why you are doing what you want to do. Why do I want to go to church today? If God is intentional, okay, for example, the reason why God wanted to go to that party in Cana of Galilee is because he wanted to reveal his mission. So there is a purpose for him going to that party. Why do you do what you do? What are they in the eternal purposes behind your action? Everything you do must be rational. If Jesus wanted, knew that he was going to be stopped on his way to Jerusalem and he still took that path and then had to go back, turn back to take another path, why did he allow it? What is the rationale behind what he did? Why did he want to go just because he wanted to go to Jerusalem? But well, he was stopped. He was not allowed to go to Jerusalem. Did he fail? No, he didn't fail because he used that situation to teach a kingdom lesson. Just getting to Jerusalem was not going to give a lesson, was not going to deliver any eternal lesson by itself. But because of the incidents that happened, that allowed the eternal reward, the eternal benefit, the eternal treasure to be unveiled. So and for anything you do, always ask yourself, why? What are the eternal gains? What are the eventual results? What are the profits for the kingdom of God, for my mission, for my calling, that this, that I am doing this? What is this going to, how is this going to enhance my, my vision, my mission, my calling? You must be pragmatic. But not just be pragmatic, selfishly pragmatic, but pragmatic about how that action you are taking right now is going to be good for the kingdom of God. How is it going to be good for other people, for you, for your calling? So the number one method of thinking or, or acting purposefully is to always state, make sure that you state a clear reason our purpose why you are doing what you are doing make sure that you are clear about why you are doing whatever you would do this is in thinking starting from thinking then in acting and in everything else number two For you, for, the, for you to really be purposeful, for you to, 
for you to truly be purposeful in everything you do, make sure you distinguish, make sure you separate, separate, distinguish your goals, your mission right now, your reason why you are doing that thing, make sure you separate it and distinguish it from similar reasons, similar purposes, similar explanations and similar that look alike goals. So the next point for you to do things purposefully is that you must acknowledge the fact that there are similar goals to whatsoever goal you have. There are always similar things related or similar. For example, when you are talking, when you are talking, you are always under the temptation of remembering something that looks like the topic you are talking about, but it's not quite relating to it right now. And if you are not careful to be purposeful in your talking, let's say, for example, I'm talking about. Um, Let's say that I'm talking about going to church tomorrow. So, going to church tomorrow is Sunday. Going to church tomorrow, I, I must say, okay, what am I going to church tomorrow to do? So, if what I'm going to church tomorrow to do is to manifest love to somebody, to go to serve, if my going there is to go to serve, then I must not begin to think, oh, what message will pastor bring tomorrow? That is another. It's still in contact, in, in connection with going to church tomorrow, but I should leave that out. So you must separate the goal that you have from similar goals. So even though tomorrow also when I go to church, I will still be seeing the pastor and he's still going to bring the word. But since that is not my primary reason of going, let me focus now on going to serve. So going to serve means I am thinking more on who am I going to serve? Where am I going to serve? How am I going to serve? What are the areas? What are the things I'm going to So I want to focus on that. Then, but I, when I'm thinking about going to serve people, I might think, oh, new people are going to come, new converts. If I'm not careful, I will be driven away sideward by thinking about, oh, how many people will get saved? Oh, how? That is what I mean. Separate the goal that you have, the mission that you have, the target that you have right now, the aim that you are targeting. Separate it from similar goals. Even though that same service, people will be born again, but what you are going to church for is for this particular thing which is going there to serve people the next thing that you might uh, that you know, like for example when you go, want to go to church tomorrow you would you definitely there will be good praise and worship teams there will be good praise and worship teams so when you go there you will discover that there is praise and worship and the praise and worship will be incredible, will be good, will be beautiful. But if you are not careful, you will be carried, you will discover that you are carried away about thinking about, oh, praise and worship, who will be the leader? What would they wear? How beautiful will it be? But then you have been distracted right there. So the way to make your purpose clear is to separate your purpose, which is going to serve in the church that day tomorrow i'm going to serve that should be your focus and that should be the thing that you are concentrating on so you are not thinking about the pastor you are not thinking about the praise and worship team you are not thinking about how much people how much people will be in attendance you are not thinking about new converts you are not thinking about the message you are not thinking about the anointing so you see these are all related purposes or related goals and aims the related mission but you are removing them you are you know you that is how to concentrate 
that is how to think purposefully and that is how to act purposefully as well and that is how to you know do things intentionally and purposefully and every one of us we have to struggle with that on daily basis on daily basis no matter what you decide to do there will be many other related items related topics many many other related things that are trying to pull you away and that are trying to take you away from what you had set yourself out to do intentionally so if that's what you are going to if that's your goal then you know you must make sure that you underplay you downplay every other thing the same thing if you say for example uh somebody just wrote i'm going to church to meet with god for example, I don't understand that. Why should you go to church to meet with God? God is in you. God is in your house. God is everywhere. You don't need to go to church to meet with God. Even though it sounds so religiously right, yeah? And it sounds so pious that I'm going to church to meet with God. That is a fallacy right there. <laughs> that is that's ridiculous. You don't need to go to church to meet with God. You, you, are, you can meet with God where you are right now. You are meeting with God right now as you are hearing me. And you can meet with God without me. You can meet with God, you know, whenever you, when you wake up in the morning, when you sleep in the morning, when you wake, sleep at night, you at the middle of the night, you can meet with God at any time. You know, those things we say might sound religiously pious and religiously good and, you know, they might sound all right, but they're just religious statements that we're all making. <laughs> T.Y. says, DSO has come. <laughs> anyway, so the idea is, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I'm trying to teach you to be purposeful. That God is a purposeful God in everything he does. So because God is purposeful, we too must be purposeful. And how do you become purposeful? First of all, give a definition of what you want to do. Where you are going, what goal are you pursuing. Secondly, you must separate that, those goals that you have with, from similar goals you must distinguish between the goal that you are pursuing the purpose that you are pursuing right now and a similar purpose a related purposes that might come to just you know a bump on your thinking process and especially this is important especially this is visible in the woman have you ever listened to a woman talk before <laughs> of course you have listened to a woman talk before and a woman will begin to talk about, oh, uh, I went to visit my mother, grandmother yesterday. Oh, okay, my sister was there, my junior sister. Okay, which one do you want to talk about right now? Oh, when we were going, oh, we saw this as an accident. Then everybody to begin to talk about the accident. Okay, we, what, what are we talking about? Hey, wait a minute. You want to talk about your grandmother? You want to talk about your junior sister? You want to talk about the accident? What happened? <laughs> and I've explained to you already. <laughs> Why women are like that, all right? Uh, uh, you know, if you listen to my series on men and women and the difference between men and women, <laughs> you know the reason why now. <laughs> the reason is because women, it's not just that they must speak 20,000 words, but it's because everything is inter, inter, intertwined, intermingled in them. Their emotions, the feelings, everything. You know, so that's why that happens to them. But they must also learn to be purposeful. And that starts with the mind, with thinking. It starts with separating everything, putting everything separate apart in your mind. <laughs> next method, the next method of purposeful thinking. <laughs> so first of all, you must identify the very goal that you are after. Secondly, you must separate the, that goal from similar goals or related goals. Thirdly, okay, for example, my sister here, Adeshitu, is saying, the Bible says, do not forsake the assemble of your people. 
Do not forsake the assembly of your pe of, of, of my people. Do not forsake the assembly of each other. All right. Now that is another scripture that people just use and quote out of context. Sister Shitu, you've been following me for some time now, and definitely you know Pastor Sunday. So, and, and of course you know I'm a pastor, and not that I don't believe in you know in what you are saying, but I just need you to learn. I want to teach you to learn to think, and you would definitely know that I'm not against church, and I'm not against people gathering together because I'm a pastor myself. And if I'd, I'd be, if I'd been against church and people gathering together, then I would not be one of the largest churches in the history of Christianity. And I would not be the pastor of the largest church in Europe. So, but I want to help you to think. Don't just take things for granted. Don't just great take things that your pastor have taught you or that you've had Christians talk about all, you know, all your life. And just, you know, what the problem with men and with people is that we don't believe what we have taught through. You think that you are the one who believes what you are saying. You think that the things that you are saying are the things you believe? Not necessarily. The things that you are saying are things that you have heard other people said. The things that you are saying and the people that the things that you believe are not necessarily the truth. Most of us don't believe the truth, and even the things that we think are the truth, they we don't believe. They don't. They, that same truth. That particular passage, for example, that that my sister just quoted, that uh, don't forsake the assembly of each other does not mention church <laughs> you know that place is not talking about church <laughs> sister shitu i'm sure you are shocked right you think he's talking about church no nope. let me prove to you that he's not talking about church <laughs> number one as at the time that scripture was written in Hebrews, there was no church and there were no churches. <laughs> there were no churches the way we know them today. And there, were no, there was nothing like church the way we see them today. No denominations and no church, no church buildings. There were no church buildings. So when he says, don't forsake the assembly of each other, he's talking about each other, just one another where two or three are gathered together. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> where two or three are gathered together, there I am in your midst. And you know the way those people used to gather together those days? When that was written, they used to gather together mainly in homes. <laughs> they just meet together, you know, in their homes, you know, when they're about to eat or when you gather together for prayer or for fellowship. They just meet in homes. They just gather together like... You know, like you just meet, you know, like the sisters from London did the other time, and sisters from Belgium did. They get, call each other, gather together. That's what they're talking about. But it's not just so that, <laughs> it's not that so that God will come to their midst. Though. God, they already, one shot of them have God already. But it's just for them to, uh, to edify each other and to be a blessing to each other. So don't be so religious not to question anything that is happening around you. <laughs> That's going to be next start of this uh, uh, class. We are going to talk about question and questioning. But today it's about purpose, so let's focus on this one. <laughs> so now I told you already the, the 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 methods. So the first method is to clearly state your goal and your your mission. The second is to separate or distinguish your goal from related goals. Number three, number three method of you thinking or acting and, uh, purposefully, for you to be able to think and act purposefully. Number three, number three thing is, number three, Before I say this number three, somebody is writing here, Kilpatrick, that that scripture is talking about the church. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That the church is talking about people, not the building. That is talking about the church, not the way we take it to be today. That today we are talking about church. We normally talk about, I'm going to church. We are going to a building. We are going to where people are gathered. You know, that's what we think. We are going to the church. Do not forsake. If, you, if you've been in the church for... 
uh, if you've been in the church for a long time, you will know that when people quote that scripture, do not forget the, I mean, forsake the assembly of assemble of your brethren. They are thinking, they are talking just about church, about congregation, about church services. But that's what I'm saying. That he's just talking about people. He's talking about people, and where two, three are gathered, that's where the church is. Anyway. Let me continue. Anyway, don't distract me anymore. Let me just continue with this. Uh, the next point, the next way for you to think purposefully or act purposefully, the next method that will help you is check. You must always, what do you call it? Periodically stop and check yourself. What, what do you call that? Uh, roadmap, yes. You must always use, you must use a checklist or roadmap. You must always apply the principle of checklist or roadmap. What does that mean? Let's say, for example, I'm talking right now. I'm talking about purpose. In my mind, under my mind, beneath, on, in my subconscious, beneath my mind, I must always keep on checking. Am I still on target? Am I still on point? Am I still talking about purpose? I know that I started talking about reasoning, I mean, a question. So I had to get myself back. No, it's not about question now. I, we are talking about purpose. So I'm talking about purpose. So other people might be talking. People might try to distract me. So you must always, you must have some uh, roadmaps that you use to guide yourself. You must have some checklist that you use to audit yourself, the roadmap and checklist that will help you to guide you to make sure that you are purposeful, you are still purposeful, that you are still pursuing the agenda you set up to meet initially, that you are still on track. So you must have some tracking uh, methods, some methods to track yourself, some milestones. You must have a milestone or some milestones in your mind, some mental milestones that you use to control yourself, to guide yourself. And that milestone must be in your subconscious also, in your thinking. So each time you are talking or talking about any subject or just discussing, you must always use your milestone. You must always use your checkpoint. You must always use your checkpoint in your talking to make sure that you don't stray and you don't go to the left or to the right, that you are always right on, that you are always on the topic that you set out to, to talk about. This is your roadmap. This is your checklist. So you must, have, you must use the principle of roadmap, checklist all the time. So you must always use that principle all the time on yourself. So if you are thinking also, don't just allow any thought to... You know, for most people, thoughts are just coming like this in their mind. Don't allow, allow that to happen to you. Don't allow your mind to just walk as, as an unguarded and unruly, uh, you know, mechanism that is gone out of order. Don't allow your brain to walk like that. Don't allow your brain to walk like that. Always make sure that anytime you anytime you are awake, that you are always in control, that you are always in charge of your thinking process, and that your thinking also is guarded. Is that your, you are thinking in a guarded way, in a guarded direction to a guarded particular to a particular goal and purpose. So your thinking must be purposeful all the time. Make sure that every time you think, you are thinking about what you want to think about. If you don't have this principle of purposefulness in your thinking life or in your mind to guide your mind, you will see that Satan will take control of your mind. Satan will be the one to be ruling your thoughts and he will just be bringing all kind of garbage to you. And you will always, you might say you are, you are not sinning, but you will be full of sin and dirt in your mind because you have opened your the door of your mind open and any kind of dirt is just coming in there. So for you to uh, avoid that, you must always be in charge of your thinking process. You must know what you are starting with. You must know that you are starting out by pursuing or intending to get to a certain goal. And that goal is what you are focusing on. And you must separate you know, you must not allow similar goals or related goals to come and derail you. 
And then you must make sure that you have a roadmap, that you have a checklist that is helping you, a parameter that is helping you to keep your mind guided, your thoughts guided in the direction that you are set out to uh, walk into or to get into, to get to before. Before I continue to mention the next point, the next methods of how to be purposeful in your thinking and in everything you do, why am I using thinking? Because this, being purposeful is needful in everything. But thinking is the beginning of everything. Because uh, as a man thinketh, so he is. So before I, begin, before I continue to give you the next point, I want to say that uh, by next Saturday, if we are going to have less than 200 people coming to watch, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do it again because uh, it's not worth it for me. So I'm just going to wait because, you know, you remember when we began in the, in the beginning, I told you guys that we must have 200 people for me to, for me to continue doing the Saturday summit. But if it's going to be less than 200 people, I'm not doing it. So I'm going to, I will try it next Saturday again if next Saturday we're not going to have 200 people right present, minimum present, then I will just say bye. <laughs> I'll go and do other things. I have many other things to do. <laughs> so anyway, that is also roadmap. That's also, uh, yeah, that's also checklist. So, you know, we must commit to our, to our agreement. So we must all invite enough people and we must all be active enough Participate. If you are really hungry, if you are really interested in it, you will make sure that you invite people to come and listen. So we are just uh, 120 right now, but we must, this team must show me not 120, it must show me 220 or 250, just like we used to have before. Okay, uh, but if you have not yet uh, shared the link, let's go ahead and share it right now. Let's go ahead and share the link. Let's go ahead and share the link right now, if you don't mind. So go share the link. If you have shared the link, then I will mention the next point. For you to live for purpose and to live, live for, to live a purposeful life and to think purposefully, the next method that you need is the next point, the next method that we need to be purposeful in what we do is the next purpose, the next method is significance. Always make sure that anything you choose to do, question yourself. Ask yourself the question, is this significant enough? Is this all I can do? Is this the best I can do? Am I, right now, am I thinking the best, on the best thing that is possible? Am I thinking the best way, on the best subject? Am I pursuing the best goal right now? Is this the most ideal thing I could do? Is this the best thing I could do? Always measure your goals or your purpose with significant with significance always measure the significance of whatever you have purpose to do you have decided to do is what you have decided to do significant enough is it worth it is it worth your time is it worth your life is it worth the effort so for you to live a purposeful life you must always checklist your purpose you must always check make and checklist you may check your no, your, your your whatever you are pursuing right now. How much that is? How much? Uh, how much uh, is that? How much? How much? Uh, yeah. How much significant it is? How relevant it is? How important? Because because you could be pop, you could be purposeful, and you could be focused on the wrong things. <laughs> you might be purposeful, but be purposeful about the wrong thing. So for you to really live a truly purposeful life. You must always relate it with significance. You must always 
try to see, uh, to, you know, to check, to cross-check, and to ask yourself how significant it is, how significant it is that thing that you are doing, okay? Okay, so I've given you definition of purposeful thinking the last time a little bit. Uh, I've also given you, uh, though I think I gave you explanation, I've given you methods of purposeful thinking. Let me now try to give you definition of purposeful thinking or being purposeful. Let me now give you definition of being purposeful. Okay, but before I do that, before I give you that definition of being purposeful, let me hear from you. Let me, let me, because it's a summit, so I must hear back from you. Let me hear from you. What do you think about what you've gotten so far? Those four principles of pop, be living purposefully or living a purposeful life or thinking purposefully, for purposeful thinking. Are they, what do you think about them? Are they something that you think will be helpful to you? What you've heard so far? Are you, uh, do you think you have been blessed? And what do you think about the teaching so far? Let's, let me hear some of your uh, thoughts before I go to the next uh, sub, sub, subject that I'm having to see. So the four things I spoke about are, one, you must determine your, your intent, your goal, your, your aim, or your purpose, what you are doing, what you are doing for. Second, there is the, the, the thing is that you must be able to separate what you are uh, doing from similar goals, similar goals that are related goals that could distract you and take you. Uh, take you away from your goals. Number three, you must be able to uh, check, have a roadmap or a checklist to make sure that you are still pursuing that same goal that you are supposed to be pursuing. And number four, uh, make sure that you, you, your goal is worthwhile, is significant enough. Use significance to check it. So nobody is writing. I can't see what people's assessments are. Okay, Doris uh, Gary said, great teaching, sir, I'm being blessed, okay. Uh, Blessindra says, yes, blessed, Pastor Sunday, T.Y. is very helpful, especially for someone like me that always working on projects, it is a, so not just a work with God, but in everyday life, okay. Uh, G.D. Craig said, excellent stuff, Dr. Adelaja. You've clarified the process. The summit is detailed and easy to follow. Okay. G. Sandra says, the teaching is really helpful. It is helping to reorganize my life. Okay. Angelina says, it's very helpful. Charles Smith says, my thinking is shifting. Uh, Lisa says, yes, I feel empowered with this teaching. I think by learning to not be distracted and stay on point with my goal will cause me to accomplish more. Okay. Kazim Ahmed, it's been a long time, Kazim. You've kind of disappeared. Says it's practical and applicable for me. By the way, if some of you are not on our, on our group, Discussion. We have a group link um, on Messenger. You could, you know, contact anyone that you know on the platform to invite you to the Messenger group. That's where I inf we inform each other of the things that we are doing. And then we have many other smaller groups like History Makers, DL D DSA Continues, and things like that. Okay. John Lucky said, "Good one, sir. Very helpful." Don't stop the teaching, sir, or else I will migrate to Ukraine. I'm, def I'm feeling that I'm going to stop. 
if we are going to right now we have 130 people which is not bad but uh you know in the beginning it was just 100 people and i say i will have just one last time next sunday i mean next saturday if you are going to have less than 200 i am not going to come up again on saturday i will just i mean on saturdays we'll just be blessed by dsc tv that will be a blessing just watch dsc tv i'll go and do some other things uh Steve Osarity said, thank you, Pastor, for this point. This is just a right word right now for me, okay? Uh, Tawanda said, thank you. It's very helpful for me as a student and in life, life in general. Adini Adekanye said, more anointing. In case she purposeful things help her want to be successful and distinguished. Jane says, this is really helpful to me, Dr. Adelaja, because I have always taken so many things for granted. I will definitely do things for a purpose, stop and think before I take action. I should really consider significance in whatever I do. God bless you. Nkeshi um, Shima, teaching is very practical and helpful to help to be yourself, yes. Bia in style, excellent teaching, Pastor. Evangelist Austin, great, it is educating. Uh, for Lou Shaviv, this app facilitates strategic planning. Thank you, Dr. Delaja. For me, Jeboda, very helpful, very with emphasis on prioritizing and maintaining focus and staying on point. Uh, Evangelist Austin Shinedu is saying somebody should invite him to the messenger the chat group. Uh, so please, if you, are, if you know anybody here who is not there, invite them, please. If you are not yet there, tell somebody to invite you. Shinwe Ananaba said, the second point is something to work on. So as, so as to, uh, on, okay. Vivian Taylor, your teachings are steering changes in my life. Give and causes me different approach. She's process from religious thinking. And people who know me know I'm a man of my word. So if I say, by next Saturday, if we are not 200, I'm off. You know me. I, I, I hope you know me that that is true. That's why it's not what I'm going to do. You to is a very helpful that Adelaja. Everything you have taught me in my life has been extremely helpful. My thinking is shifting now, and I'm doing things intentionally henceforth. Fumi Jeboda says, DSA continues. Uh, we add, okay, she's, she's going to add somebody. But uh, for me, you don't just need to act, add him to DSA continue. Uh, you need to add him to Messenger. Stella Nook, who said, I've learned to focus my thinking to maximize my result. Ben Ocon said, read the first chapter of a book you suggested by Ralph Waldo Emerson on self-reliance. You have greatly simplified the concept of thinking. Please don't stop. We'll invite, we will invite others. Well, that's better. He's the only one promising to invite others so far. That is Ben Oko. Uh, ben Boniface says, renewing my mind. Good. Adesha, they say, please, you can't stop because I don't go out on Saturdays because of this teaching. Yeah, but if you are just going to be the only one, you are going to be surprised that I will stop. <laughs> Esther Kuganja says, thanks, Pastor. This teaching is helping me to deliver more focus talks with one man with one man go so if me stopping or not doesn't depend on me it depends on you all it depends on how many people we are going to invite Ori your me said is very insightful it's very helpful it will help me to construct my thoughts and be more focused when thinking or acting i will always set roadmaps when thinking or acting takunda said thank you pastor sunday for revelations god bless you sir uh, 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 okay, there is an announcement from me here. Somebody, one of my assistants, put forward. Here is the new event to invite people for the 25th of February. Okay, that's a, a link there for, if you want to invite people. And Marie says, since coming into contact with you, I've implemented some great principles. Purposeful thinking is the one area I'm doing well in. One, I try to make each minute of my day count. Brilliant. Two, I recenter my thoughts when I drift away. Brilliant. Uh, three, I have made a list of three goals to stay on and achieve. Beautiful. Four, focus, be here and now, and many more. 
Brilliant. You make me proud. Who is that? Anne Marie. Very proud of you. I'll be expecting you in Ukraine someday. Uh, Ogene Tega. Tega say very helpful pastor. This uh, University of Life. Tony Adekan, he said, I just joined to encourage you, Pastor. This is my first time. I will share and encourage my friends to join. Some shout, please. Invite me to the group. This teaching must not stop on this platform. Please, I live in Switzerland. Okay, this is someone who is coming for the first time and is so anxious that it will not stop. Well, we'll see what will happen next Saturday. Okay, let's keep on going then. Let me now give you definition of uh, purposeful thinking or purposeful living. So let me give you the definition now. So to think purposefully means to think around a goal. To think purposefully means to not allow any your thoughts to drift or to just go uncontrolled and unmonitored. Your thoughts must be guided by your goal. It is where you are going, what you want to achieve, that determines what you think about. So instead of, you know, we've never been told that when we're growing up. Normally when we grow up, we just grow up and just anything that comes to your mind, just what you do. No, when things are, when thoughts are coming to your mind like that, you just say, stop. You challenge those thoughts that are coming to your mind. I say, no, where is this one going to? No, this is not what I need now. You are not leading me to where I want to go. You are, this is where I want to go. I am directing, I'm redirecting these thoughts. Come this way. This thought, come this way. This is what I want to do. And this is what I want to act. I want to act in accordance to where I want to go to. So your thinking must not be chaotic. And your thinking must not be no erratic. Your thinking must not be spontaneous or sporadic. Your thinking must be put under your goals, the goals that you are living for. If you missed out on my teachings on goals and purposes and callings and who am I, you need to discover who you are. You need to, if you have missed out on the beginnings of these teachings, I started since January, I mean, or this, yeah, I think since January, that there are three or five things you must think about how to put your life, your th thoughts in order. You know, you might need to go and listen to my old messages. And, and uh, so, you know, th th purposeful thinking is to make sure that all your thinkings are leading you to a goal, to a target, to a result that you have intended, that you have planned for, that you have set out for yourself. So don't live an accidental life. Uh, the same thing with, not just with thinking, but with action. Anything you do, you must ask a question. Why is this being done? And if you are going to become an analytical person, it's not enough for you just to be purposeful. If you are really purposeful, you must also question what you are doing and where you are. For example, you go to church on Sundays. You must question why is the pastor doing this thing he's doing? You know, for example, they are calling for offering or for give, give and give money, give money to this. You must question, what has the money that I gave last month been used for? Do I know what the money has been used for? Where is this, you know, what is the evidence that this money is being used judiciously? Am I being a good steward in this particular instance? You must ask yourself, why are the praise and worship people doing what they are doing right now? This dancing, is this dancing now a show off or just gyrating and enjoying themselves or they, God has something to do with this or it doesn't have anything to do with this? You must question everything and that's going to be next, next teaching, next Saturday. We're going to talk about questioning. But you must make sure that there is a purpose that is in line with your purpose. So whatever they are doing in the church, they might be good, but is it in line with your own purpose? Whatever they are doing in your community, in your environment, they might be good, but is it in line with what you want to do? You know, you must measure everything by your own goals, by your kingdom, kingdom goals and kingdom purposes. So don't just be, you know, mechanical in what you are doing. You are homo sapiens. 
you are supposed to be using your brain and to be making sure that what you are doing, you are not just doing to please other people. You are not just doing them to make sure that other people are happy. But you make sure that what you are doing is what is in line with what your destiny is about. So to live a purposeful life is to live in accordance to the goal you had earlier set for yourself. Then, in the process of doing whatever you want to do or thinking, you must have an objective. You, must, you know that you have an objective that you are pursuing right now. There must be an objective that you want to get to, that you want to, you know, you know, uh, attain. There must be there must be an objective that uh, that is leading you. That is, uh, you know, the goal, the objective that is, uh, you know, spurring you to do whatever you want to do. Something must be invest in instigating you to do what you want to do, to do that thing you are doing. What is the objective that you want to get to? What is the goal? What is the purpose that you want to, the result that you want to have at the end of the day? You always must ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish? That is how to live a purposeful life. Everything you do, what am I going to accomplish here? What am I, what is this going to help me to, how is this going to help me to accomplish my kingdom purpose, my life goals? So when you, you do anything, living a purposeful life is questioning yourself and using your life goals, your life mission as the parameter. You must always question yourself to make sure that everything you are doing right now, where you are present right now, where you are going now, the people you are talking with now, the you know relationship you are having, the church you go to, whatever that church is doing is going to help you and empower you and you know equip you and quicken you in attaining your life goal and purpose for which you know that you are created. So three things must guide you in living a purposeful life. The first thing that must guide you is your goals. This is the definition. I'm giving you a definition. So whatever you do or even think about must have a goal. And whatever you find yourself doing or in what environment you find yourself in, you must make sure that that environment is in line with the goal that you are pursuing. Number two th thing that must guide you in living a purposeful life is that there is, you know, you know that there is an objective in everything. There is an explanation. You must have an objective. Objective in doing what you are doing. There is an explanation that is in line with the purpose, with the goal, or uh, with the destiny that you have ahead of you. You must find out the objective of other people as well. What are their objectives in doing this thing that as they are asking you to do? Other people must you must you must question other people's objectives as well. You must because if especially if they want to get you involved in it, you want to find out what is their own goal, what is their own objective. Are you sure that is in line with what you want to do? Is it in line with your own belief system? Is it in line with what you would like to have? Next one, make sure that you are always trying to accomplish something even when you are thinking so ask yourself the question what am i trying to accomplish as i'm thinking if you go to church what am i going to what am i trying to accomplish with this church that i'm going to will i accomplish more if i had sat down at home to do solitude for example will i have accomplished more if i sit down or to, to seek the face of god on my own or to read, or to study, or to research, or to do things more. Will I accomplish more just by going to the service, to church, or I will accomplish more by being on my own, working on my goal and on my calling? So what am I trying to accomplish? Is the time I spend with the people in the party or in the church or in other places at work, is it taking from me? Is it taking me away from my goal, from my objective? Or is it taking me nearer to it? Those are some of the questions you want to ask. You know, those are some of the things that will help you to be more purposeful. That is, if we are talking about living a purposeful life. Am I accomplishing something with what I'm doing right now? 
is the thing I'm, I'm accomplishing in line with my goals? Am I having the right objective? Is this in line with my objective right now? So all your motives must be in line with your goals. Not just have a selfish motive. Not just have a motive to please your flesh. Not, not just have a motive to please people. Not just have a motive to make money. All your motives must be in line with your goals, with your objective, with your calling. The activities that you do, don't just be involved with activities. Your activities must lead to a goal and to a purpose. And that purpose and goal must be the goal that is your eternal goal, that your eternal reason why God has created you here, why you are here, eternal purpose. Then your intentions, well, you know, your intentions must always be clarified from time to time. You must always make sure that your intentions are right. That your intentions are in line with your God-given goal and mission. That you are not compromising in your intentions. So, these are the definitions. If you want me to give definition, this is my long definition or explanation or whatever you call it of living a purposeful life or thinking purposefully. Now, we have about 40 more minutes to go. So, the next, the next uh, subtitle that I would like us to examine before I go is I want to help you and say what are the you know, the subtitle is going to be what are the questions that will help you to live a purposeful life or to think purposefully questions that will help you that will guide you to know that you are on the right path that you are Thinking, living purposefully and you are thinking purposefully and that you are purposeful in everything you do. And these questions will also help you to find out if the things that you are involved with, either with church people or with work people or with your family people, if it is just a time-wasting endeavor, time-wasting activity or is a purposeful activity. So I'm going to ask you, you know, I'm going to give you questions that will help you to discern. Are you supposed to be where you are right now? Either is in with church, Christian functions or activities or not? Are you supposed to be listening to the people you are listening to right now or not? Are you supposed to be following, are you supposed to be following the people you are following right now or not? Are you sure you are actually living a purposeful life? So these questions will help you to live a purposeful life. With questions that will help you to discern and to recognize if you, what you are doing is purposeful. You know, while, while I'm talking, I'm thinking we might need to write a whole book on this subject. Just this message of purpose. I think we need a whole book on it. I, even though my friend, late Dr. Miles Monroe, has written a lot of books on purpose, but his own approach is a little bit different, I think. I think it's a little bit different, his approach, because I've read some of his books. It's different from this. I think we might need to write a whole book on purpose. And I know that uh, my another friend of mine, what do you call him, uh, Rick Warren, has also written a book on purpose for purpose driven life but i don't i think this is a little bit different from the way they have approached it but this of course is with emphasis on thinking because as a man thinketh in his in himself in his mind so he is
So it's starting from thinking to then to affecting every other thing you do. <sighs> How many questions will I give you today? I might have about up to eight questions here for you. Seven or eight questions I will have for you before we finish. Let me see if I'm going to make it on time or not. Number one question to help you to know how purposeful you are. If you are purposeful in your actions and in your thinking. Number one question is, always ask yourself, what is my purpose in doing this or that? What is my purpose in doing? What is the purpose? What is my goal? What is my purpose in doing this thing that I'm doing? You could sit in a church right now and say, what is my purpose in sitting here? Somebody could go and answer like my other sister had answered yesterday today and say, oh, I'm here to meet with God. But that, you know that's a lie if you, if you could really think very well. You can meet God in your own house. You can meet God with your, your anywhere. You can meet God with fellowship with people. You can meet God. But why am I sitting in this fellowship, in this church now? By the time we all ask ourselves, you will discover that you are there mainly because of the fear of people. Or you are there because of the cultural conceptions or misconceptions. <laughs> or you are there because of your relatives. Or you are there because of just culture or tradition. But you are not really having any gain. You are not really having any purpose, any goal, any result. That you are not, even though you are going to church, but you do the same thing over and over again. And you cannot even question it. And because you are not even used to questioning it. And you are even afraid of questioning it. So I'm not sure if you people are ready to listen to my teachings on think because I'm going to help you to think about some serious things. Same with marriage. Same with marriage. Some people are in some marriages that are, the marriage is holding them back. The marriage is even not just holding them back, it's damaging them. The marriage is damaging their children and it's damaging themselves. It's damaging their future. It's damaging their calling. And they say, oh, I must be here because... Uh, you know, I'm married and uh, God said I should not divorce. But you must know exactly how to relate what God said to your situation. You don't just be dogmatic in your, in your decisions and just find yourself, and just stay where you find yourself and say, oh, since this is the place I find myself, this is the place I must be in. Whereby the God himself who said you should not divorce, you cannot serve him again. The God himself who created you and you say <laughs> for for you to serve him, you cannot serve him anymore because you are you don't you, you are in a marriage. So any marriage that is holding you back or stopping you from serving God, is that not clear enough that you know you are supposed to get yourself out and go and serve God better? But because you are living in some fear of people and in some dogma and you've never quite bothered to question yourself and to ask any question ever. You are, you know, just, you are just wasting away. And the painful thing is that life is only once. God, God, life is only given to you one time. If you waste this life one time, you waste it forever. Some of you are not even having your own video pro programs yet. Some of you are not even having your, your own platform. Some of you don't even do anything to bless the world. Some of you are not even stepping out to your callings. Some of you are not even doing anything for your purpose at all. Some of you are not even doing anything for your for your for your. Uh, some of you are not even doing anything for your calling for your for you for the purpose of God in your life. Some of you are not doing anything, you know, to justify that God even made you that he that God, you know, to even please God that made you. And some people are planning to go and marry. Are you sure you must marry? Why? Why? Are you sure you'll be more productive if you marry? Are you sure you, if you marry, that is, you'll be please God more? You will serve God more? You will be able to, you know, accomplish your purpose better? Are you really sure? Are you sure? Some of you would marry and you would, that would be the, the beginning of your of your fall, of your downfall, of your of your of your degradation. 
So, as, so some of some people and even some parents here, are, you know, they are still pushing, are busy pushing their parents, their children, putting pu pu putting pressure on their sons and daughters to go and marry. Are you sure that's really what they, what you want for them? Are you sure that will not be the beginning of their end? Are you sure that's not what's going to kill them? You know, I've been a pastor for thirty. I've been a pastor to, to, for almost close to thirty years. And I will tell you that I've seen more people who married and became redundant and became irrelevant for God and his purposes and the purposes that he created them for than before they were married. I've seen destiny being wasted. I've seen destinies perishing just as a result of the fact that you must marry, you must marry. So that's why I'm saying to live a purposeful life is you must question this thing I'm involved in. Or this thing I'm about to go into. I'm sorry. So many, so much tragedy out there. So much tragedy out there. And people are just getting involved in some disastrous things just because that's the culture. That's what everybody is saying. Because that is what everybody is doing. That's what everybody is saying. And that's what is expected of them. People's lives are being ruined. In fact, some people are dying physically. Just because they want to fit into people's expectations. It's time to begin to question everything and to know that the only thing really that you are here for is to please the master. The only thing that really matters is what he created you for, for you to accomplish that goal, that purpose to glorify him, to live every day for him. Are you really sure you are living every day for him? You are living a purposeful life for him every day. That everything you are doing every day is bringing you closer to the purpose and for the reason that he created you for. Are you sure that, you know, whatever you do, all your activities are targeting the glorifying of God, the pleasing of God, and the reason for, for, for your creation? Are you sure that all your activities are purposeful? Purposeful in line with what he created you for and what he had for you. So that's the first question you want to ask. Everything I'm doing, everything I'm doing, I, is it in line with my destiny? Is it in fulfilling the purpose for which God has created me? So if that is not the reason, if you cannot answer in the affirmative, then the question you must ask yourself is that what are the things that are holding me back from fulfilling destiny on a daily basis? What are the things that are holding me back? You will discover that the answer to that question will be your job. Because you need to work, you are not fulfilling destiny. So maybe it is good, it is better for you to do what this gentleman did. Uh, did, you, did you see my, the link I gave from Brother Rick? Yeah, Brother Rick, his testimony and the points I gave. Yeah, I gave a person and I, it's in the messenger. You can look at it or in, it's in all of us. It's in messenger, it's in um, yeah, DSA continues. Somebody should go and take it with the points I gave and the link and put it here, just copy it and put it here. Because, so that people will see that, you know, like what that guy said, Brother Rick, is that now he's just going to do manual jobs or just simple job, so that he will be able to free himself that so much that he will be able to use most part of his day in fulfilling purpose. But for, for some of us, we have been so busy running after survival and running after people's opinion, people's approval, and the, you know, we just want to run and make money and look good and look that we have a good job or we have arrived. We have just been doing a lot of things that are taking us directly away from our destiny. Just because we want to survive, just because we want to have a living, just because we want to make a living, just because we want to make more money. But what that brother was saying, that testimony of uh, brother Rick is so powerful. Because that, what he was saying is that now he could just go and make some, do some job a little bit and make some little money. And, but anyway, you know, then the old day he could have more time to fulfill destiny. 
So what is it in on daily basis that you do or that is hindering you, that is stopping you from fulfilling your life destiny and goals? What are the things that you, you are so occupied with, that you are so engaged with, that, that have drawn you away from the very reason that you were created? If for some of you, it's going to be a job, salary, the need for survival. And for some of you, is you know, you are in the kitchen all day long because you need to cook for some husband or for some wife or some, for some children. For some of you, it's just some religious things. Some pastors have brainwashed you into thinking that you must go to church every day. Every day is conference. Every day is program. There is one program or the other in church. So you are so, you know, you are so engulfed and embellished, embellished in all this program, this program and that program that you don't even have time for your own life. That you don't even have time for your own destiny anymore. That you don't even have time for your own family, for your own children, talk less of your, your own purpose. You don't even have time for the same God that called you to be able to fulfill a certain goal and purpose for him on the earth. You don't have time for that anymore. Because you are so involved with pleasing some church people or some pastors and some religious people. So you are living out the destiny of another man, not your own destiny. So some of these things are some of the questions you must ask yourself. So what are you, what am I doing right now? Is what I'm doing right now my purpose? Is there, am I doing something that this thing I'm doing is it in connection with my purpose? Why am here? Why I'm here? Then another question you must ask yourself, this same question, uh, under this same question, you must also ask yourself, uh, this person that is telling me this, what is his purpose in doing it? And it's very easy to find out. You discover that, you know, people, do, does this person have my best interest at heart? These things that they are telling me, give, 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 pay this, pay, pay for this, and pay for this, pay for this, pay for this, give this, give this, do they have my best interest at heart? Are you sure? What is their own purpose in telling me to give and give, 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 give? What are they running after? What, are they, what is their intention? What are they really following? What do they really mean? This is including your relatives. This is including your, your family members. This is including your pastors, your leaders, your job people. So that's the number one question. I'm going to give you eight questions that will help you to live a purposeful life. Eight points. Eight questions that you must ask yourself. I think each of each one of these eight questions must become a chapter in the new book in the book that we will write about how to live a purposeful life. So the first question is what is your purpose in doing exactly what you are doing right now? Everything you are doing is it lined up in con is it connected to the very purpose for which God sent you here in the first place? Or it's only connected to pleasing God, your, your, your somebody. Do you know that there are some people that know that God told them to go maybe as a missionary somewhere or to go to the Bible school or to even come to HMT. They know that God told them to do it all. That God told me that I must go and do this. But they said, I cannot do it. Why? Oh, because my husband will not allow me or my father will not allow me or my... Uh, you know, whatever, my boss will not allow me, my job will not allow me. So you, <laughs> you know God's will and you rather, you know, push God aside just to please man. So you answer the question. You are, it's, your, it's your question. Answer yourself the question. What I'm doing right now, am I doing exactly what is in line with my purpose? Why am I doing what, am I, what I'm doing? Either? Am I doing this thing right now? Because this is going to glorify God. Because this is going to bring me closer to my goals and my purpose in life. This marriage that I'm going into, this relationship that I'm in, is it taking me right directly to fulfilling, to and pleasing God with my own life on earth? What is my goal in doing this thing I'm doing? What is the goal of these people who are telling me to do these things? What is their own goal in telling me these things? What, is the, what are they after? What is their goal in doing what they are doing? 
all these pastors that are on television to preaching and doing these things, all these conferences that they're doing, what is their goal in doing those conferences? Sometimes you will discover that the people who, who are doing the conferences, their goal is to, to, to build, a, build a church building somewhere or to build a university somewhere. Or their goal is to give, give, give some, uh, do some more offerings. Or their game is just for, to say, oh, more people came to church today than yesterday. Or their goal is just to, to, to you know. People have all kinds of different goals. There is somebody right now that is watching me and you have... You have some very big health challenge. Either it is cancer of the breast or something that is happening to the right part of your body. I think it's like cancer of the breast. I'm, I'm saying something is not clear, but it's like meta, metastasis or some metastasis or something has gone around your... It's not just the breast anymore. It has gone to your arm. It has gone to your lung. It has spread. It's spreading all over your body. But God is going to do a miracle for you. God is going to do a miracle. He's gone to your lung and everything is walked down. God is going to do a miracle for somebody right now. I mean, it's like you're on the fourth stage or whatever level it is. The last stage of cancer, that rapid cancer growth. In Jesus' name, we rebuke that cancer. We come against that spirit of cancer in whosoever life that is. Right now, we challenge you. And by the spirit of God, I charge that spirit of cancer to die now. We rebuke and uproot this disease we charge you to die I command you to die dry off and let a miraculous power of God come over you right now cleanse you make you all and give you the strength to live again I command that liver to come alive I command those lungs to start working again I command the 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 the, the the cleansing of the organs from those uh, metastases on all those things that are infection that have gone to the different part of the body to the brain it has even affected the brain i command the metastasis the infection to the cancerous cells wherever they are hiding to be flushed out right now by the blood of jesus by the life of god in a supernatural way let everything come alive in you from head to toe let the life of god resurrect everything concerning you right now in Jesus name and you know this person I'm getting more revelation about this person this person was sitting down there crying listening while listening to me Charlie I'm thinking I'm about to die right now I'm at the end of my life and I've lived my life not purposefully I've lived my life trying to please everybody I've lived my life trying to you know satisfy people up and down I've done I've run away I've I've run up and down doing everything for every other person and now I'm dying but God is going to give you the second chance God is going to give you a second chance right now that is going to be a supernatural miracle and a supernatural testimony and the lung of the left side also, the left side of the body also, in the name of Jesus, everywhere in the body where this thing has gone, where this thing has affected you, life is coming over to usurp death and to overthrow death in Jesus' name. So many of us, not all of us are having cancer or any terminal disease, but some of us, we have wasted most of our lives running about doing religious thing and thinking that is pleasing God. <laughs> Many of us have been religious, going to church, running up and down from one church to the other for, for all our life, 20 years, 30 years. Nothing to show for it. Uh, you know, we've not lived a purposeful life. <laughs> So there is the first point, that is the first question that will help us to live a purposeful life. The second question that will help you to live a purposeful life. Oh, I can I could hardly leave that first point. And I see I've I want to give you eight of them because to, next Saturday I want to do another 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 I will do the second one about question. But today it's just about purpose. Like I said, you know, so for some of you who have not made a, who have not shared this message, let's go and share the message right now. Let's go and press the share button. And so, so for all of you who didn't hear what I said, the next Saturday, if you are going to have, you remember, I gave a commitment the first day of the summit. I said, if we are going to, 
have internet without any problem. You see, I did my own. I went and paid for internet. I paid thousands of dollars for internet for it not to be interrupted. We renewed all internet in my house so that this will be this Saturday summit will be smooth. And you see that it has been smooth ever since that time. I said that's one of my conditions to continue. Then the second condition is that we must have 200 people. And I said now, I've tried, I came back last Saturday, it was less, today is less. Tomorrow, if next Saturday, if it's going to be less than 200 people, live right now at the same time. If it's going to be less than 200 people, then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to come back again to do live uh, until, you know, until things get better. So I'm not going to come to, even to do the Saturday. We'll just be enjoying the, uh, the life, the... Whatever. I mean, I'm just talking about the Saturday summit. I will not do the Saturday summit again if if we were going to be two, less than 200. So if you want me to continue the Saturday uh, summit, we must bring 200 people. We must all invite let nothing less than 200 people. Okay, next point. Next question that you must ask yourself to, that will help you to live a purposeful life. Wow. You know, what do we call? there is another person that God wants me to pray for that's having hemorrhage. Uh, hemorrhage, what do you call that? Mm. No, no, it's like a blood when you have... Uh, uh, huh? Hmm? Is that, no, no, no. Yeah, it's like, anyway, you know, you have this situation that is making your, that's what uh, making people to be paralyzed or, in, is, we call it insult in our place, but what do you call it in, uh, in English? I forgot the insult, they call it in Russia. I forgot what you call it in English. What, whatever that thing is, you know, when you're, not a tumor, but when your nerve, nerve breaks and people be, begin to be paralyzed or right side is paralyzed, stroke, 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 somebody, Somebody's having a stroke, yes, so, or you are about to have a stroke, something like that, that you've just had it, or you are at the verge of a stroke. We rebuke that stroke. I think you had it before, but you know, you could have the second one, which could be very, be very, very damaging. So, in Jesus' name, we rebuke that stroke and we proclaim healing on you right now. We, pro we, we co command that hemorrhage, the brain hemorrhage, to be totally you know to be totally healed and the brains and the all the things that are happening in the head to be totally restored in jesus name be healed in jesus name well the second point now before i go ahead we only have like 10 minutes more to the to, to before two hours is over and i still need at least one hour more to go so either i'm going to and i'm not going to go back to it next saturday because i'm going to go to another topic next saturday so what do you want me to do do you want me to continue to finish this topic today or to just stop where we stop i want to hear your your answers do you want me to continue and finish maybe we need another 30 minutes at least 30 minutes or one hour maybe I don't know, but nothing less than 30 minutes before I finish because I've just given you one question. I have several more questions to go. Uh, so either we finish just now or we, we continue. I need to hear your answer. Your answer will let me know either to continue or to stop. I think most people are saying to continue, right? Okay. Continue. All right. So the next topic, I mean, the next uh, question to ask, the next question to ask for you to know if you are living a purposeful life, and uh, that will help you to live a purposeful life, is uh, what is the objective or what is the yeah, what is the objective in this particular task I'm engaged in right now? Whenever you are engaged in any task, please, always, you have to develop the culture and the, develop the good habit. You've got to develop the habit of asking yourself for the objective 
of doing whatsoever you are doing. Another person that is having a growth in the right cancer, right breast, right cancer, cancer of the right breast, God is healing you as well. And a man that is having a cancer of the male, what do you call that? Uh, prostate cancer, God is healing you as well. So the next thing, I think there is something about this teaching about purpose. So, you know, people will want to die. People want to live a life of purpose and God is bringing healing to them. Anyway, uh, the next question you must ask yourself is that in whatsoever, you, you must develop a culture. Develop a culture, a pattern, a habit of questioning, of, of, of asking the objective for whatsoever thing you are engaged in. It doesn't matter for whom. It doesn't matter who you are doing it for. What is the objective? If you can answer the objective why you are doing that thing, and if that objective is in line with your goal, with your ultimate goal, with your life assignment, then you are on the right track. So always ask question the objective of what the, whatever assignment you are carrying out right now. What is the connection between that assignment, between that engagement, and your destiny, and your calling? Ask for the objective of the task you are performing right now. What is the objective? Is that objective connected to your life goal? Question the objective of the job you are doing, of your job. Is the objective to make money, to pay for some rent, to look good, to, look, to be proudful, to brag? Uh, is what, how is that making you to fulfill the calling and, 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 and purpose of God for your life? What is the objective behind the habits you have, the traditions you have, the company that you maintain, the fellowship that you, you belong to, the groups that you belong to, the church you go to, the leader that you have, the pastor that you have, the church that you go to, the, the, the work that you go to. What is the objective of you being that company? Mm -hmm. Is all that connected to the destiny that God has for you? What is the objective of the principles that you live by? Why do you live by those principles? Why do you even believe in some of those things that you believe in? If you, you have to question your belief systems. What is the objective of you getting involved with that kind of society or association or company that you are in? What are the policies that you 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 obliged to that you get yourself involved with? What are the reasons behind those policies? What are the objectives of you doing those policies? Why are you using that particular strategy that you are adopting? What is the objective of you getting involved in that particular strategy that you are using? So that's not the question number two that you must ask yourself to live a purposeful life. And all your answers must come back to one thing. Your answer must come back to the fact that all the thing you are, you are the reason why you are doing this thing is in connection with the goal and the purpose for which God sent you here on earth. It must be in connection with your passion, with your goal, with your dream, and with what God has called you to do. Number three. The, second, the number three question you must ask yourself is, should I question 
my so-called purpose. And you must challenge your own so-called purpose. Challenge your goals. Is this the most ultimate goal I could be involved in? Is this really in line with the best that I could do for God? Sh should I challenge it? Sh or should I change it? Should I correct it? Should I modify it? So that's number three question you should ask yourself. Maybe I should refine it. Ask yourself, maybe you don't need to change the goal and the objective. Maybe you need to refine it. You have to question the church you are going to. You have to question the pastor that you, you have, the leaders that you have. You could still have relationship with them, but are they giving you what you really need? You know, some people think that uh, they, if they don't, you know, you know, you must, you could have the relationship with people, but are you really learning from them what would take you to, to, you know, be able to fulfill your destiny in life? You know, there is somebody that has been having uh, suicidal attacks. If you've been having suicidal attack, we rebuke those suicidal attacks in Jesus' name. We set you free. We come against any attack like that. To your mind. So maybe you need to refine your your vision, your goal, even your church. Maybe you need to refine the the, the concept that makes you to go to church. When I started going to church, I was going to church for miracles before. Maybe that needs to be refined. You need to go to for miracles. To, I mean, to go to church not for miracles anymore. That's for new converts. That's for. Uh, new believers or for unbelievers. You need to refine your reason for going to that church. To refine your purpose, your objective in going to that church. Or in going to that work. And even doing what you are doing at home in your family. You might need to maybe change your goal, your objective, your, your purpose for doing what you are doing. Or you need to refine it. Or you need to modify. Ask yourself. It's not me to answer for you. Ask yourself, do I need to modify some of my goals or my objectives or my, or my purpose? Do I need to modify my purpose? Do I even need to modify my relationships? My friends? Do I need to refine my relationships? So I'm just giving you questions that you might need to ask, that you will need to ask yourself to help you live a purposeful life. Nkiru says, very true, most suicidal attacks are connected to lack of purpose. Well, God is removing that right now from people. I saw it. God just revealed that to me. That, was, that attack, that Sisodo attack, the, the, the desire not to live is going away right now. Because you are going to discover purpose. You are going to discover, you are going to not just discover purpose, you are, you are going to be able to refine yourself and begin to live a purposeful life. Next point. Always question yourself. Why did I say what I just said? Or why did he say what he just said? Why are these pastors doing these things? Why is this preacher doing this? Why is a preacher spending $12 million on television program, televisions to just pay for television channels when the members of his church cannot even... <laughs> Eat three square meals. Why are they building all these buildings, buildings, buildings? When people in the church cannot even be catered for. So why are people doing what they're doing? Why are they saying those things? Is it manipulation? Is it with sincere heart? Is it just a religious thing? Why are all pastors repeating themselves? Why is it that everybody is doing the same thing? Why are they copying each other? 
Is this God? Or his laziness that just making them to copy each other? Why do they have all those members, all those uh, branches? Is it just to say, oh, I have 10 branches there, 20 branches there? So why do people say what they say? Do they say one thing and mean the other one? Do they really mean what they say? Is that really what they are after? So why do I say what I say? Why do I do what I do? Why does he say what he says? My, my kind phrase says, I'm still searching for my purpose and destiny. Well, I'm sure you've not read my book, uh, who, am, who Am I? And I'm sure you've not listened to all my teachings on calling and purpose. If you, have, if you have listened to my teaching on calling and purpose, sure you will not be asking that question because, so I advise you, Mike, to go and listen to those. Go and lock yourself up somewhere for a week or maybe for more and just go and listen. All those teachings are on YouTube and they're on my YouTube page, Sunday at Elijah Official and they're on my, uh, on my what, blog, on my blog. Go and listen to them as many times as possible and you will discover your calling easy. Okay, next point. Next point. Whenever you are thinking about something or whenever anybody is talking about anything, ask yourself, what is my central aim in this line of thought, in this particular line of thought, what is my own belief system? Where did I get that belief system from? Why am I thinking the way I'm thinking? Is it justified? Is it justifiable? Is it scriptural or traditional? You know, some of us, we don't even know the difference between what we believe. Is it scriptural or traditional? Are there inferences? Are there Facts are there researches for what I believe, for what I say I believe? Are there evidences? Are there proofs to back up what I say I believe? Why am I copying these people? Why am I just dancing and praising and doing the same thing all these people are doing? What is my own central? belief system, my own central aim, goal in this line of thought. Why do I act like this? Why do people act like this? Is this line of thought that the people have, is it justifiable? Is it truth? Is it in line with the truth? Or is it just because Somebody is doing it, everybody is doing it, I'm doing it. Nobu Arise El Gibo says, Sir, can your dream be a clear pointer to your calling? Yes, sir, it could be. But also, I will encourage you to follow the link that Car uh, Ka Katerina Caronis just gave concerning calling uh, my series on callings. Go and listen to that whole series. Do you? It will really help you. So anything that is happening, ask yourself, what is your own thought like? What is your own line of thought? What is your, I mean, what is your own aim? What is your own belief system? What is your own paradigm? What is your belief system like? Why do you believe in that particular way? Why do you follow those people to do those things? Why do they do what they do? You will discover that a lot of people are just doing things because they are biomasses. They never question them. They never ask questions. They never thought. They never even question them. People are just doing things because that's what everybody does. That's just the way things are around them. So they are not really doing anything 
in an informed manner. Next point. The next question you must ask yourself regularly from time to time in whatsoever you find yourself doing is what is my central aim I mean sorry what is the purpose of this meeting that I am in what is the purpose wherever they inf inf inform in call you to any meeting or to do something or relationship what is the purpose of this meeting what is the purpose of this place where I am? What is the purpose of this meeting that I'm involved in? What is the purpose of this relationship that I'm involved with? What is the purpose? What is the goal? And is the purpose connected to my purpose, to my ultimate goal, to my life goal, to my life mission? What is the purpose of this gathering I am in? This live broadcast? Is it adding to me? Is it benefiting me? Is it helping me to become a better person? Am I seeing my gain, my reward, my profit, my interest, my benefit? Am I seeing the benefit for the kingdom of God, for myself, for my life, for the world? Am I becoming better? So what is the purpose for this meeting that I'm in or that I'm involved with? Is it at work or family meetings? Or what chapter am I in in my life? What is this chapter of my life? I am 50 years old. What is the, what is the, what chapter it is? Or what chapter am I in life? If I'm 20 years old, 30 years old, what chapter of my life is this? And what am I doing to define it? And how can these particular things, you know, help me fulfill the purpose of my life? The same, same question relates to your relationships, to your actions. What is the purpose of this, my activities, my actions? What am I aiming to get, to gain, to do? What is the end result I'm aiming to, get, to, to have? Next point. Did anybody put the link for Pastor, I mean, Brother Rick? Okay. Mayo did. Okay, so I would like to encourage everybody to follow the link for, if you, have, if you did not listen to the testimony of Brother Rick, go listen to it. There is a link there from Iowa that you could follow, and it's also on our messenger uh, as well. So, you know, next point. What is my purpose for education? Some of you are going from one school to the other, which going to get one degree, and those degrees, you are not even using them. So what is the purpose of my education? Is it better for me to just go and get self-education, rather, than to do all these universities and pay all this money, and there is no profit, no, no, no benefit? If you have not yet uh, shared the link to this message, please go ahead and share the message. Go ahead and share the link. I think it will be a blessing to a lot of people. So let's go ahead and share the link. So ask yourself, what kind of education am I involved in? What kind of self-improvement am I getting? What is the reason for my education? Well, am I really educating myself or I'm just getting paper? Or I'm just getting degree, I'm just getting certificate. But am I really getting educated at the end of the day? Am I being helped? Can I see the result? Is it practical? Is it helping me? Where is it going to get me? I 
how can I be, use this education? Is it better for me to just teach myself? Is it better for me to just go and get practical knowledge from somewhere? Question your education. Question your knowledge. These things will make you better. Finally, number eight question that I want to ask you today, I want to give you today to help you to live the questions you must ask to help you live a purposeful life. The last question is, always ask about the function of anything that you come across. What is this thing for? What is the function of this? What is the function of this? How does this function? What is this meant to do? What are these things meant for? Or don't be intimidated to always ask about the functioning of everything, especially mechanical things, uh, technological things, uh, so, you know, just new, new things that you've never seen before, bodily systems, you know, either for a human body, ecological body, Technical, technological body, house, work, professional, show intellectual curiosity. Ask questions about the functioning. How is this supposed to work? How does this work? How does that work? Show interest in machines. Things that you you have in, you know you you've, you didn't know you you are not aware you don't know how they function. Show interest in tools. Show your interest in economic policies. Show interest in the government. In 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 you know show interest in things that you see around you. Don't just buy past things and say they don't concern you. They help you to grow to know better to so be able to know what to do or what to use to benefit your 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 world your ben you know you don't know what will you most of the thing you see might be, you might be able to use them to benefit yourself to benefit your calling to benefit your purpose so if you find out what is this machine for then you discover oh maybe i could use it to do my own programs i could use it to start my own broadcast i could use it to do my own program somewhere what is this tool for oh maybe i could use it to you know fulfill my goal to fulfill my purpose what is that government policy about? Oh, wow, maybe it could help me to get money to fulfill my purpose. To, you know, So that's why intellectual curiosity is necessary. You might be able to discover things that will help you, that you'll be able to use eventually to fulfill your goal, to fulfill your purpose, to fulfill the destiny and the calling that you might be having. So, basically, that is the teaching I wanted to give us today. Uh, I'm going to call on uh, Mayowa to come, and she has some announcements to make, and then I will come back and give you my last information for the day. Please. Hello everyone. Hi. Um, most of you would have uh, gotten my message on Messenger and on all of the platforms where I'm announcing about DSA's birthday that is coming up. Woohoo! Um, the good news is he decided to um, honor us during May with live broadcast daily, and that broadcast is a special one where you can ask him any questions that you want, you know, about his life, about his ministry. So he would have a daily broadcast every single day in May. So I'm sure that you would all love that, and it's great news, especially now that if we don't get 200 people on board every Saturday, he wouldn't be doing the live broadcast anymore. But at least this one is concrete, is determined, we're going to be with him daily throughout May. Secondly, so in order to, before I move on, 
In order for that to be successful, I need everybody to send their questions. I, there's an email address that I have on the, on the message, which, which is DSA50, because it's going to be 50, this is Golden Jubilee, so it's DSA50 at gmail.com. So send me all your questions, and there's a deadline for that question to be sent. So please look at the deadline date. Send it so that we can compile it into categories and give him the questions so that I can answer everybody's question. Any questions at all, please send it to us and we compile it. And every day in May, he would um, answer the questions as many as possible. Secondly, um, we also need you to uh, give us your suggestions for this birthday. We want to get everybody involved. It's not just about him being 50 in the last 50, in the last 50 years of his life, also about his next 50 years or more, God willing. So please also, we need your suggestion. We need to get everybody involved. We're a family after all. So we need everybody to be involved in this and to give their suggestion, their ideas. The, the sooner the better, because if we don't get it on time, then we can incorporate your ideas onto the uh, birthday celebration in the planning process. So it's going to take time to plan this and put it in place. So send your ideas. If you want to get involved in your region or in your countries where you are, if there's certain things that you want to do and you want us to provide, let us know or information that you want us to uh, support you with in order to make sure that this uh, celebration is a success. We want full engagement with everybody. So please let us know um, how you want this to, um, what suggestions or ideas that you want for this grand 50th birthday. And thirdly, excuse me. Right, so the final thing is about testimony, testimonials. So testimonies and messages that you have for him. In order um, to compile uh, messages, I know I've heard a lot of people said that they want to send messages for him to him um, for his birthday. So we also need you to compile, not too long please, a two to four minutes video or write a message which we can read out or, uh, or put in on his post um, to congratulate him on his birthday or to give testimonies of how um, the last few months that you've known him, the changes that has happened in your life, much like um, what Brother Rick did, he really liked that. So I think, although his one is long, if you can compile a shorter one, um, explaining or giving us, um, the, giving us information about uh, DSA, what he's done for you, your testimonial, not really information, but information about your life, how it's changed, let it to be um, constructive um, testimony, something that people can follow. You know, we've had really great testimonies over the last few months. And I think uh, a special birthday one would really be good. So it could be a con congratulatory message rather than a testimony. So you might just want to say something and just, you know, you know, pour your heart out in a video. Please do. Or uh, you might want to be specific and say certain things. We welcome that as well. So I'll just recap quickly. The first thing is that... Hooray is agreed to do uh, 31 days, because we have 31 days in May, I believe, of live broadcast every day answering all your questions. So that's like exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm really looking forward to receiving your great questions uh, that you want him to answer, or even if there's any other thing that you think might be good on that uh, daily live bro broadcast, please let us know. Maybe we will be able to incorporate it. Secondly, uh, to send your testimonials and your messages for his birthday, for his 50th birthday, congratulatory, or it could be a uh, testimony, or it could be in writing. So it doesn't have to be in video. It's gone. Oh, it can be in writing as well. So uh, do that. And thirdly is your ideas. So we need your ideas, your information. We want to engage everybody. Like I said earlier, it's a family. So this celebration is not just about the people in Ukraine. It's about the whole DSA family worldwide. So we need you. We need your uh, ideas, your, your contribution to make it a success. 
So thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, I hope that we will be seeing each other every Saturday and not just final Saturday or next week. I have one more suggestion. When you, I don't know what devices that you're using, but I use an iPhone to watch um, DSA. And there is share and there's, there's share with friends. So if you go on share with friends, you can press the button several times to share with various friends. Once you've shared once with a friend, it doesn't repeat that friend. So you's not, you're not in danger or any risk of repeatedly uh, sharing with the same people. So don't just press share, but press share with friends and select the friends that you want to share with during the broadcast. I think if you do that intermittently, you will get more people. I, I did it, and I think I invited like 300 people, and of the 300 people, maybe 10 people joined. So if we all do it, if we have 100 of us, and then 100 of us can get 10 more people each, then that will multiply, and we'll be able to get the numbers that we need. Because I really want to hear this uh, critical thinking. I really, really need it, and I hope you need it as much as I do too. So thank you for listening to me. Take care of yourselves. I'll get past the back. Oh, dad. Thank you. Well, I went out there to change, and uh, I needed to change because I was actually very wet. <laughs> I was all wet, <laughs> so I needed my shirt was wet. My <laughs> Yeah, T-shirt was wet. So thank you so much, everyone. I don't know what Mayowa was talking to you about, <laughs> and uh, but um, but one thing is sure. I heard her talking about uh, next uh, Saturday being the last one. Yeah, that might just be the last one. If we have less than three hundred people, it's going to be the last one. I mean, two hundred people, two hundred people. Uh, then you know you have to come to Ukraine to learn come to Ukraine to learn. Okay. Uh, now, let's, let me just round up my teaching for today. Um, if you are not here from the beginning, uh, what we started with was the scriptural background for this teaching. I gave you the scriptural basis, the scriptural foundation for this teaching. And uh, I gave like maybe maybe six, seven, eight, maybe ten, uh, ten different scriptural references with Jesus of our critical thinking or analytical thinking um, and how Jesus used it and purposeful th in purposefully. So, you know, there are eight principles of analytical thinking and the one we, are, we, were, <clears throat> we went through today is uh, the first one, which is purposeful. You must be purposeful. So <clears throat> I gave the scriptures on how Jesus is purposeful in everything he does and how God is purposeful in everything he does. Then I went to tell you about the methods of how to be purposeful, how to help yourself, the methods that will help you to <clears throat> be purposeful in everything you do. So um, there were four methods that I gave in uh, being you know, to help you to be purposeful. The first method is to state your goals and aim clearly. The second one is to distinguish and separate between your goals and your aim and uh, related goals that you, that might be connected or related so that they will not uh, mingle with the very goal that you are after. If you miss the, those, that first part of the teaching, you really need to come back and listen to all these messages again because sometimes we we'll do deceive ourselves by coming late and then we we'll think that uh, we heard because we heard just one half or the second half of the message. But if you miss the first half, this first half of the message, then it's as good as you didn't listen at all. So I would like you to, you know, go back and listen. And even if you listen to everything, if you have not listened to me four times, I would do the same message at least four times, then you've not even heard that message at all. So I would like to encourage you to listen, to go listen to this message again. So apart from distinguishing your goals, uh, the, ne the third thing that you need to do is to periodically set up, uh, check uh, your 
uh, roadmap. Mm -hmm. You need a roadmap and a checklist that will help you to know that you are still in line and that you are actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> that you are pursuing your goal, that you are still very purposeful, that you are still doing exactly what you need to do. Neki Okoro said, Pastor, we will not just make it 200 people, but more than a thousand. Well, I've heard that before, Neki, but we'll see how you work. We'll see what you do. But we have already spoke about it two weeks ago, and it didn't work out. So I think, you know, because I'm not going to be coming to see if it didn't work out or not. Next Saturday is the only time to, to, for you people to, you, maybe you need to be organized. You know, it's not emotion that brings results. It's organized organization you need to you know maybe get 100 people gather together and strategize, strategize it and you know really work it out and everybody make some commitments and follow them through and if you want to have 200 they, you, you need to do what uh, Nike says you need to have a thousand not just invited but committed then that way you know that you at least even if it's not, not just 400 but you need to make, make it four or five times you know back up so when you have that kind of backup, then it could work. So apart from the milestones, uh, that's number three method of uh, uh, checking if you are purposeful or not. Then number four method is to check the significance. You need to check by the significance. You need to use significance to, uh, know, to, to know if you are still purposeful in what you are doing. How significant is the thing? Then the second, the third part of the teaching is about the definition of purpose, how to live a purposeful life. What is a purposeful life? So I gave the definition of that one. Uh, I'm not going to repeat that again. Then after that, we had this fourth. So there are four parts to this message. The biblical examples, uh, is the scriptural Jesus example of being purposeful, God example of being purposeful. That's number one. Second one is uh, the methods of knowing if you are purposeful or not, of being purposeful, that will help you to be purposeful. Third is uh, uh, the yeah is the questions that we are asking the you know no, the definition the definition of being purposeful and number four is questions about being purposeful. Okay. Oh yeah. Be Pastor Doctor Sufficient is reminding me of my of the next book that is coming up. I'm sure you people have seen it. Uh, you've, you've seen the book. Next Saturday, no, we are going to do the, I'm, I'm sure Pastor Sufficient has written it here. Please, you all need to read this announcement by Pastor Sufficient. On Monday, we are starting what they call a pre-order for the book. On Monday, that is, is it on the 28th is Monday, right? No, this is not 20, 28th is Monday, right? 28th is Monday. So on Monday, we are doing, Monday 28th of February, we are doing a uh, pre-order. We are giving the pre-order for the book. And I think the price, what is the price, Pastor Sof Dr. Sufficient? I think it's like $1 or so. $1. That book is cost, going to cost like $20 or so. But it's, you know, from $20, they are going to give you just for $1. That's like for nothing. That is like nothing. That is like... Even me, I don't. I would not like them to give it away for one dollar. That's like nothing. That's like that's like an embarrassment for me. But they just want to do that for that one week. So from the twenty eighth, from Monday to the twenty fifth, you can do a pre order. So instead of twenty dollars, you get it for one dollar. Well, I think one dollar or two dollars or something. Now ninety nine cents. It's even less than one dollar. So all of you can go and get the book for ninety nine cents from Monday, between Monday and, that is the electronic form, electronic book, that is the, what do you call it, uh, Randick or what do you call it, mm. e-book, e you call it something, ring Kindle, Kindle book, yeah, so you could get it on Kindle, uh, the electronic book, from Monday to 25th, from Monday to Saturday, then Saturday is the, whatever, the grand open, so that's like for free, that is just like getting the book for free. 99 cents. Yeah. I don't know why Pastor Sufficient put that price for it. She's the one in charge of it. But if I had known that that is the amount she's going to use for it, I would have, I would have said two, two cents at, the, at least. That book is too precious for it to be for two, one, 20, 99 cents, one dollar. No, that's just, 
That's just an embarrassment. But Dr. Sofisha, we are not going to do this anymore. Maybe at least for two dollars, maybe. <laughs> but, but this one we have already announced it. Mountain of Ignorance, yes. The book is called Mountain of Ignorance. We need to... So it's going to come out uh, on Monday. You could begin to do your pre-order pre on Amazon and on uh, Okada Books. Amazon and Okada Books from Monday. Amazon and Okada book from Monday. So you do the pre-order till. So it's not just for Monday. Monday till Saturday. Saturday is the real day. You have to. Uh, you have to buy the last day. So if you don't buy it by Monday, then uh, by Saturday. Sorry, by next Saturday, then that's the end. Then uh, you have to buy it for like twenty dollars or so. So uh, <clears throat> so go to Amazon and Kindle and. Uh, and uh, Okada books and you know all of that place where you could get uh, uh, e you know whatever ebook and you'll be able to get it for almost free from Monday to Friday so you know do yourself a service do yourself a service but 99 cents that's like crazy but no problem so God, that God wants to bless you it's like just like for free of charge so go get it for free of charge everybody and um Okay, now, uh, before I go, let me hear of your, of your feelings about these teachings and about what we said that next Saturday, if you are not 200, I'm, get, I'm out of here. So, but what do you think about the teaching today? So, this is the first principle of analytical thinking, the art of thinking. You got the first principle today, just the first one. Today is a real, total, comprehensive teaching on the art of uh, the the art of thi of thinking, to thinking purposefully and living purposefully. I, I think we should have a book on it. I think we have to have a book on that. So how to think purposefully and live purposefully. So let's now hear your feedbacks, and I'm going to read your comments. Let's read your comments and get your feedback. Prince uh, Owosh Michael, God will increase us, sir. Amen. Michael says, wonderful. Okay. Okay, I'm waiting for your comments. Otherwise, how is already our time is over anyway? We just finish up. Pastor Abi Daramola is asking: Is there a limit to how many books could be purchased? No, you could purchase as many as you want for one dollar. <laughs> You could buy as many books as you want for 99 cents. I, but I, I don't know. Come and tell them. I just don't. My wife is saying something here. Well, you could say it louder. I can't hear. Okay. It's electronic. So you have to sign with another account because you're getting an electronic version. Then you have to say, you have to come and say it here. Yeah, please. You have to make yourself visible. Okay. Go to the back. Hi, Pastor Abi and everyone. Because it's electronic, you can only order one on that sign-in. You can't order more than one. Unless so you what sign they on. Do? So you have to sign on, on another account. You can't sign in and get more than one. I think she's not talking about herself. She's talking about uh, people of her influence. Yes, you can ask them to join uh, Amazon and buy. No, just, you don't need to join. Just go and buy themselves. Yes, but you have to be a member. Uh, you don't have to remember. You just have to have your $1 okay. in your so, account. So go on Amazon, and but you can only get one per name, per account name, per one account. Okay. Thank you. That is for the uh, electronic one, for the electronic book. All right, so, well, if there is no comments, I see that we don't have comments today. If there are no comments, uh, then we'll see you on Saturday. It will be a great joy to see you people on Saturday. Thank you so much for the, for the time. 
I hope you've been blessed by the teachings and go ahead and put it into practice. Go ahead and put it into practice. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Bye for now.